Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I am sharing my final Chanel makeup haul of 2023 and really my last makeup haul of the year. We have a new Le Beige Winter Collection this year. We typically know this as the LeBlanc Makeup Collection. It comes after holiday but before spring summer every year and the colors are always pinks and purples. Same color scheme this time around but instead of LeBlanc packaging, we have Le Beige. And it actually goes really nicely with the Après Ski Alpine inspired ready to wear collection that's currently in boutiques. It's very pretty. So first I'm gonna show you what I picked up. We have three different shades of this new Le Beige Healthy Winter Glow Primer. It's moisturizing and protective. I have light copper, frosty white, and icy beige. We also have a newly beige eyeshadow palette. This is the shade Cool, which instantly reminded me of the shade Light. So I compared them yesterday whenever I was visiting the boutique. And then I pulled out Tender. Those are the two other pinky purple, kind of similar-ish tones. Of course, this palette is different and I actually really like the look of the iridescent shimmer shade. So I'm excited to play around with this. I'm usually not overly excited about pinks and purples. LeBlanc is usually not my favorite makeup collection, but for some reason, this Le Beige palette is really speaking to me this year. And then the last thing I was able to purchase were the blushes. So they also had two really beautiful nail polishes and I think two lip balms. I skipped the lip balms, I skipped the nail polishes, but I do have all three of these beautiful, very vibrant blushes. They have a gorgeous snowflake design embossed right on the powder and these shades are stunning. So I have Rose Polaire, Mauve Glacé, and Coral Givre. Yes, I probably butchered that. <laughs> as far as I remember, these are the only Le Beige powder blushes that I've seen. Of course, we have the Le Beige Water Fresh Tint blushes. We also have the Stick blushes, which are really pretty. But this Le Beige packaging feels so huge and it feels so much heavier than the typical Chanel blush. They do come with a little half moon brush. I really like these brushes. It's kind of tapered on the side and I don't know, it just looks and feels a little bit higher quality for a travel brush. I will definitely keep you posted when this collection is available for sale online. I know they mentioned at the boutique that they did not receive high quantities of any of these pieces. So if you are at all interested, if you have an essay, it would be worth reaching out pretty quickly. Overall, I would say this is one of my favorite winter collections because everything seems so practical this time around. There's nothing that I wouldn't be excited to use. And I'm genuinely curious to see how these new Le Beige primers compare with the number one de Chanel primer. So I pulled out a couple pieces. We're gonna do some comparisons. I'm gonna scoot in a bit closer so we can finish my makeup for the day. I'm starting with swatches of the new Le Beige primer. This is Frosty White, Icy Beige, and Light Copper. And then we have the number one de Chanel Red Camellia Skin Enhancer. This is Soft Pink, Medium Coral, and Intense Amber. And then down here at the end, I'm gonna swatch the Le Base Illuminatrice. This is a glowing makeup primer, also moisturizing and plumping, very similar texture and consistency to the new Le Beige. The Le Beige Light Copper right here is pretty similar to this number one de Chanel. This is the Medium Coral. And then I would say the Base Illuminatrice is sort of a combination between the frosty white and the icy beige. For today's video, I'm gonna start with icy beige. I think this is going to be the best one for my skin tone. If I were to only purchase one and not buy them all to swatch them for you, this would be the one that I would have chosen. On the back it says, winter glow enhancing primer, moisturizing, protective, fresh, luminous complexion. Because there's no information online, I'm not sure what skincare ingredients are included. Because it's Chanel, I'm sure there's a little something in there. They have a little color and a little sheen, so it reminds me a little bit of the Le Beige Liquid Illuminators, but I imagine these are much more subtle. It feels like a really lightweight gel, so I think this is gonna be really nice beneath makeup. It makes me nervous that it's called the Healthy Winter Glow Primer because I'm hoping this isn't gonna be limited edition. Le Beige is usually the summer collection, so it's kind of funny to see winter pieces in Le Beige packaging. I really wanna keep this makeup look skin focused, very fresh, lightweight, as if I'm out for the day. It's winter time and I just want a little glow. So I pulled out my Sublimage products and I'm going to stick to keeping things light. Anytime I say I'm gonna do light makeup, it ends up getting a bit out of hand. 
I even did my eyebrows first, so I would have no excuse and I wouldn't get carried away. I'm also blending this out with a sponge so it doesn't get too heavy. The sponge will help to absorb any extra product. I just want to even out my skin tone a little bit, but no foundation mask. Going in with a little bit of the Chanel Sublimage Concealer. So I learned something new when I was visiting the Chanel Boutique. I'm just going in with my finger in the cap. I know it's not the most hygienic thing to do. Chanel has a limit of 40 pieces of beauty that you're allowed to purchase every year. I knew they did limits on handbags. I think you can only buy 12 handbags in a calendar year. All of the really VIP clients have to restrain themselves and they can't just buy a new bag every time they want or buy a bag from every collection. They have to just be careful that they don't reach their limit. I have purchased zero Chanel handbags this year, so I definitely do not have to worry about hitting my limit there. But I did not realize they also put limits on beauty. I think for most people, it's really not a big deal. Although it does add up relatively quickly if you use a lot of Chanel products when you think about skincare, fragrance, any gifts you might give, foundations, concealer, eyeliners, lip liners, mascaras, the things that you're constantly repurchasing, in a full calendar year, you could get to 40. Here, I thought I was being really responsible this year, going on my low buy, even including Chanel products, but I was at 48 when I was at the boutique. And I think in the past, they would just override it. They're no longer allowed to do that. So it was a bit of a situation. I was planning to pick up the nail polishes and probably the lip balms as well. I could not do that. So after picking out my items and just chit-chatting with my sales associate, she goes to ring me up and she's just standing there as the two managers are explaining the situation and we're all trying to figure out, okay, what do we do now? Because I'm kind of stubborn and set in my ways. Like, no, I, I need to purchase these items. I have to do a review. I want to share with everybody. We're all just trying to brainstorm and figure out what to do because everything's already in the bag. I'm like, please take my money. <laughs> I just want to shop. And everyone was trying to be really nice about it, but at the same time, I was kind of stubborn and sort of holding my ground because I'm like, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, I have a video to create. It's not like I just want to shop for makeup and I just want more, more, more makeup. To me, it's more of a business transaction. I'm ready to create content. To make a long story short, it all worked out. Nobody broke any rules. There was no overriding in the system, but we were able to figure out a way for me to take my items home with me. I was so thankful. But just a word to the wise, if you are a big spender and you love Chanel Beauty, there is a limit, 40 pieces. The limit does exist. <laughs> I definitely understand why they have limits on handbags because a lot of people will want to purchase their really exclusive, hard to get handbags and then maybe resell them and make a profit, which Chanel obviously does not want you to do. But with beauty, I was honestly so shocked that it was a big deal. I was explaining to the manager I was not purchasing five of each product. I wasn't picking up multiples. I never really pick up multiples. I've only been purchasing items for my own personal use. I don't have any tricks up my sleeve. I'm just trying to create content. It's probably a good thing, honestly, because it will make me a little bit more cautious next year when I'm thinking about what I'm gonna purchase from the new collections. If my gut is telling me that I'm not gonna like something, I'm not going to buy it. And then if there is anything that I need to restock, maybe a mascara, foundation, Something that I can pick up at Nordstrom, I'll just go to one of the department stores, you know, Nordstrom, Neiman, Saks, and I'll get it there. That way it doesn't add up and sort of count against me in a way. It will help me with my low buy in 2024, so I'm not mad. Before we finish the face and get into the blushes, I want to finish the eyes. I'm going to play with this palette. So this is the Cool Le Beige palette, and I told you it reminded me a little bit of the Tender palette. So you can see they're both plums there's some purples but different undertone and really just different color story in general but if you have tender at least you can see the comparison to know whether or not it's worth picking up the cool as well i know i definitely want to play with this really pretty iridescent shimmer right here so with a fluffy brush i think i'm gonna go into this bottom shade it's really pretty it's not pink it's not purple it's kind of a mix of the two so i'm just gonna pick this up 
looking at the brush, it seems really pigmented, so I'm gonna be very careful. And I am going to put that kind of on the outer lid. I'm gonna start on the outer lid. Oh, yeah, that's pigmented. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Up to the crease, a little bit in the crease. Wow, you really do not need much. I am a little bit shocked by just how pigmented that is. With a really fluffy brush, I'm just going to blend around the crease to keep it really soft. I feel like my finger is going to be the best tool for this iridescent shimmer. It's so pretty. This is going on the inner lid. Ooh, that is pretty and it really does look iridescent. There are teeny, teeny, tiny little blue specks in there, like blue shimmer. It reminds me of Sugar Plum Fairy makeup. It's very wintry, almost like little snowflakes. Gorgeous. I'm doing the same thing on the other side. I'm starting with that really pretty plummy pink. I'm gonna build up that color and then softly buff it out. I don't think I own any iridescent eyeshadows from Chanel. It's just not something they're known for, not something you typically see. So I like that they kind of experimented and did something different. Even though it's iridescent and it has shimmer, it's still Chanel. So it's not over the top, it's not overly glittery. It's still a very wearable eyeshadow. And then I'm picking up this center pink shade right here and I'm buffing this in the crease just to help blend. Using the little brush that comes with the palette, I'm gonna pick up the deepest shade just for the sake of using as many shades as possible. And I'm going to very lightly buff this beneath the lower lash line. I think this is what happens. This is why my eye looks never stay really light because I try to use as many shadows and as many shades as possible in the palette. What starts out really soft and simple tends to get colorful and complicated. I'm just so curious to see how all of the shades perform. This darker shade is really pigmented as well. The key here is to just keep blending until it looks soft. I quickly finished the eyes with eyeliner and mascara and now it's time for blush. I think we can go ahead and rule out the coral blush as much as I love that shade. It doesn't seem to work the best with the eyeshadow palette. So I think if you're going to wear the blush, you need different eyeshadow. If you're going to wear the cool palette, you should probably use one of these two blushes. I really like both of them. I'm tempted to try one of each. You know what? I think I'm just gonna stick with this one. This is the Rose Polaire. So we're gonna try this one today. I can't tell if my brush is just too fluffy or if the shade is really light, but it seems to go on very lightly. I like it, but it's softer than I expected it to be. Let me swap that out. I'm gonna try the brush from the palette. You can see I'm really getting in there. On the one hand, I'm trying not to completely destroy the snowflake, but also I'm really trying to build up the color a bit. You know, it's just light. I think that's what it is because I am scraping this brush. I mean, you really shouldn't have to, but also you don't want to have to like dig into the pan. I'm being very firm, draggy, draggy. But it's just a light shade. Not what I expected. It's really pretty. It is so light. Just so you're aware. If you have really fair skin, if you like a really, really light, soft blush, you will love this. I mean, I do think it's a really pretty color, but very, very soft. Now I definitely wanna try this Mauve Glossé. So this one is the deepest shade, 
And again, I'm gonna go in with the little half moon that comes with it. You can, you can see. It's also pretty soft, but I like it. I like both, but I will say the Mauve Glossé, this is my favorite. The undertone is really pretty. It's kind of a raspberry. Even though it's soft because it is just a deeper color, it looks really pretty on the skin. What do we think? They're very sheer, very light. And I love them both, but I would say this one is my favorite just because it shows up a little bit more. And see, you can build it up, but you know, I've been building and building for a while now. I still don't think it's really, really, really intense. So I think that's actually a good thing. Yes, you can build up the color, but it's gonna take you a minute. Now I'm gonna even out the other side. I also think this shade of blush goes with the eyeshadow the best. And the final step is lips. I don't have the lip balms. Both of them looked very sheer. So I pulled out Mademoiselle. This is the Rouge Coco lipstick. The number is 434. It's classic. I think this is the perfect shade of lipstick for this eye look. This is the Rouge Coco Lip Gloss in 722. And this is basically the makeup look. Overall, I'm really happy with it. I think we need a little highlighter. So I pulled out this little brush and I'm hoping this will work. I'm gonna use the top shade up here in the eyeshadow palette. I just sort of want to see what this looks like on the cheek, just a little bit. Does that work? Maybe a teeny tiny bit. Doesn't work the way I was hoping it would, but it still looks kind of pretty. And I don't think you need a lot of highlighter. Right now with the eye and the lip, I don't want to add a really blinding bright highlighter anyway, so it's perfect. Just to give us a little something on the cheek. Very soft and subtle and I really like it. I actually really like this eyeshadow palette and I say that kind of surprised because I don't typically lean towards these colors. I don't really wear purples. I usually wear browns, neutral, earth tones every single day. There's something about it. I don't know if it's the tones or what, but I just really like it. I'm not going to question it. I could see myself getting a lot of use out of this palette. If you already have a lot of purple pink eyeshadows, I think it was 2020 was the year where everybody brought out a pink eyeshadow. Is this 100% essential, necessary? Probably not if you already have a lot of similar things. I do always like their quince because you have a little more versatility with these palettes. I think this is the standout. This iridescent, slightly shimmery shade, that would be the real selling point of this eyeshadow palette for me. Otherwise, you could probably stick with your light or your tender or just skip it in general, but I do think very pretty. The deeper colors have insane payoff, and I think it came together really nicely. Got a little bit darker than I was hoping, but still really nice, and I think on a day that I'm not trying to test out all of the shades, I could probably do a really simple get out the door type of makeup look as well. These primers are gorgeous. They feel really nice on the skin. Again, if you have a lot of the other primers from Chanel, is this an absolute must have? I don't think so. I think they feel very similar, but maybe there's a shade in here that you don't already have that really speaks to you. So these I really like as far as holding my makeup on all day. I'm gonna have to see how my makeup looks at the end of the day, but I will say it, they feel hydrating, smoothing, without feeling like silicone. It doesn't feel 
pore clogging. And I really like the luminosity they give, so these I'm really excited about. These blushes threw me for a bit of a loop, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know why I was expecting them to be so much more intense than they are. I really don't wanna just scrape my finger in there. But they're light, they're sheer. Not in a bad way, but just my observation. Just so you know, I don't want you to expect that you're gonna get a ton of color from these blushes because you simply will not, especially this rose. This is very light. Reminds me a lot of the pink tweed blush. If you remember that from a couple of years ago, it was so light. But that was kind of the purpose. You know, it was meant to be sort of a natural flush. I'm excited to try this coral. This is going to be beautiful. I love coral blushes. And the Mauve Glossé, of the two I tried today, this one is my favorite. I built it up a decent amount on my cheek and this is what I'm left with. And I actually think it looks really flattering. I'm happy with this color. I don't need it to be really dark. I don't need intense eyeshadow level pigment out of my blushes. I personally don't even like blushes like that. So for me, I think this is beautiful. And the snowflake design is really beautiful. How can you resist? This is more of a unique shade for Chanel as well. I think I probably have sim something similar to the rose. I might have something similar to the coral. This, I know I definitely don't have anything similar in my collection already. Overall, I am very happy with this collection. I love that they did something different. They brought us Le Beige instead of LeBlanc. Little switch up. So that completes today's video, my final Chanel collection, my final makeup haul of 2023. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned, everything on my face. As soon as this collection launches, I will update the description box. All of the links will be down below. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.